Good evening. Uh, on behalf of the Abingdon uh, Virginia Town Council, I'd like to welcome the, everyone to the March 2014 regular session of the Council. Uh, a couple of things that I'll mention uh, as we get started, one of which is that uh, each month our Council members receive a package of materials to help us prepare for the issues that we'll be considering uh, uh, at that night's meeting. Uh, copies of the documents that we have to work with are available on the table over to my left. You're welcome to have a look at them and uh, uh, you know, review them as appropriate. Also, I would ask at this time, if you would please, to uh, turn off uh, any cell phones uh, that you might have with you uh, so, and uh, leave them off during the course of the meeting. And uh, that being said, uh, I would uh, ask our clerk, uh, Ms. Cecile Rosenbaum, if she would call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Here. Mr. Howard? Here. Mr. Humphreys? Here. Mrs. Lowe? Here. Mayor Morgan? Here. And let the record reflect that all five council members are present. Okay. Thank you. We, it's customary for us to begin our meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, and I would call on our Chief of Police, Mr. Solomon, to come forward, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Kelly, I think we have uh, uh, recognition of a couple of our employees uh, tonight. Would you care to lead us through that, please? Uh, yes, we do, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public. It's always a great honor to recognize uh, certain town employees. We have three individuals tonight. I'm not sure if uh, everyone is here. Um, that we need to recognize, and, and it's not often, I, and I can't recall in the last eight years if I've had, had this many who have uh, received awards of, of the longevity that we're going to um, um, mention tonight. But uh, what I'd like to do is call each of them forward, and then I have um, a, a um, plaque to present to you along with a service pin for you. Uh, and I'll, I'll comment as you come forward a little bit, uh, a little bit about what you do, and um, try not to embarrass anybody. Um, uh, we do have Marion Watts, and I believe Marion left word that he could not um, be present um, uh, today. Uh, Marion has been with the town for 25 years, and I, I will try to get Marion to come at an upcoming uh, meeting to uh, to be recognized for his uh, length of service. Marion is the director of our building inspection and has been for the past 25 years. Um, uh, call uh, Robert Norris. Is, is, is Bobby here tonight? Okay. We'll try, we'll try to get Bobby here um, at the next uh, council meeting. He too has been with the town of Abingdon for uh, 25 years. Now I better back off um, uh, and he and Bobby is with the uh, director of public works. I better back off what I said a minute ago that I wouldn't embarrass anybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 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 third individual that we'd like to recognize tonight um, needs no introduction with the town, uh, Mr. Frankie Mr. Frankie Fulton, um, and Frankie has been with the Department of Public Works for 35 years. So Frankie, if, you, if you'll come forward, please, and everyone give Frankie a big round of applause. Yeah. You owe me 10 bucks for gas money to drive that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Now, now, many of you might not might not recognize Frankie as an employee of the town, but you recognize him as Santa Claus. Yeah. Each year in the Christmas parade right here is, is none other than St. Nick, and he does a great job. I tease Frankie all the time that if he leaves employment here, I feel confident that um, if, if he can overcome his Southwest Virginia accent, he, he can probably go to uh, New York and work for Macy's as, as Santa Claus. We probably, probably a pretty good dick. We game. won't tell anybody that you used to sit on my lap. Frankie, we have 
have a, we have a nice <laughs> little uh, plaque for 35 years of dedicated wow. service. It's not often that we get to give <laughs> these out for this length of period of time. It's my sincere hope. I, I have known you since I was a small child, and and uh, <laughs> I've, been, I've enjoyed every minute of being around you, both uh, personally and professionally. And you do a great service to the town of Abingdon and, and all your civic duties as Santa Claus. And I know you help uh, needy people out quite a bit, and you're to be commended for all that all that you do. But I want to present you with this plaque. And then we also have a 35-year uh, lapel pin for you. And it's my hope that you'll stay here for another 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be here by you say. Uh, Those pictures are ten bucks a piece. <laughs> autographed or not? Yeah, I'll autograph them for five okay. more. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, it's hard, it's hard not to smile when you're having your picture taken with Santa Claus, <clears throat> but I hear he's also looking to moonlight with Duck Dynasty. So. <laughs> Thank you very much for all the service you've done for the years. And uh, Frankie had told me a while back that I believe it was your father that uh, yeah. also worked uh, for the town for a lot of years. My grandfather. Grandfather. He flew his buggy down the street with uh, a sweeping with a, a broom and a trash can and a shovel. Wow. So I have the cart at home. I don't have the trash can stuff, but I have the two-wheel cart at home that he pushed. Well, well, the family served the town for a long time, and we thank you very much for that. Okay, Mr. Kelly, I believe there's another one or two. To... Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, they, the, the other two individuals okay. could not be present tonight. Well, we'll, we'll hopefully try to recognize them at an upcoming council meeting. All righty. Well, very good, sir. We thank you, and we appreciate uh, uh, Frankie coming back and being with us tonight in addition to all the service that you've, uh, you have provided for the, uh, the community. Uh, we're going to make, I believe, a slight adjustment in our uh, agenda for this evening. Uh, I believe uh, Mr. Greg Tucker is still with us and uh, uh, going to come forward and talk a little bit about our uh, completed audit for the 2013 fiscal year. Good evening. Good evening. Um, we concluded the audit back in the, um, I guess, the late November, early December. Uh, I'm happy to report we had no findings or any type of, um, you know, any problems we encountered in the audit. The town ended up, um, as I say, without any findings. The uh, sewer department in particular basically broke even. Um, a couple other things that are uh, worthy of note. You used part of your reserves this past year to um, basically uh, supplement or, uh, your um, revenues and um, basically you budgeted uh, an amount that um, was impacted some from your um, meals taxes, sales taxes were down a little bit and largely due to where the uh, factory or excuse me the um, construction over at St. Paul you lost all those guys that are living here spending the money on meals and such like that um, but in total you ended up with about a two million dollar um, deficit, which we kind of planned on that. And uh, again, a lot of that uh, can be attributed to things that we never want to happen. And um, with the decline in those property tax, excuse me, the meals and lodging taxes and all, I mean, it looked what we kind of expected and did real well. The town's still in very good shape. Um, the sewer department basically broke even. And, uh, you know, as I said, I didn't have any problems at all. It looked very good. Does anyone have any questions of Mr. Bunch, uh, Mr. Tucker, excuse me, uh, regarding the audit? Uh, I would note a, a couple of things uh, when I reviewed it. Uh, uh, I noted that our uh, uh, the amount of money that we have, uh, uh, the net bonded debt per capita has gone down substantially. That's and, correct. Uh, 
That's correct. Uh, the town has very little debt. I mean, it's, uh, compared to a couple other places we hear about lately, very little debt. I think you only have about a million dollars of debt. And compared to a lot of other communities, that's very, very good. Well, I mean, basically, in comparison to some other towns, you're, in essence, debt-free compared to some others in the area. Um, you have a little bit of debt in sewer, which is at zero percent, so it's free money. And, uh, very good, sir. And I, I also noted in reviewing the report, I had the reminder that uh, the last time we adjusted our tax rate uh, was uh, in 2004 when we uh, we reduced it uh, from uh, 32 cents per hundred down to 28 cents per hundred. That's correct. And we have managed to uh, maintain that same tax rate uh, again since uh, that time period. That's true. And uh, I know that there have been a number of communities uh, during these recession years when they've had reassessments of uh, property and their property uh, assessed value of the property uh, uh, went down and we've uh, we have had a s increase in the value That's of correct. Our, uh, real estate over the years it actually went up about 12 million dollars the value of the property in the town just in the last fiscal year alone went up about 12 million bucks so, which is great yeah. very good sir yeah very good okay well i was pleased to see that and uh, and i also have indications that in general uh and i'm sure the business community will be pleased to uh, are also pleased to report that uh, uh, meals taxes uh, seem to be moving up again, which That's certainly correct. suggests yeah. that the uh, tourism is uh, bouncing a back, uh, back a bit from where it was, and mm -hmm. I was very pleased to see that. Yeah. Do others have questions or comments about the audit? And again, you noted there were no findings. There was no, nothing. Sure. Everything was be actually good, and you know, part of the decline of those things are basically the, uh, you know, the uh, construction guys are gone from over St. Paul. Yeah. But as we know, it's kind of down and back now, so it's yeah. kind of a momentary dip. So. And, and the coal economy, uh, we were certainly affected by the uh, change in that. But, uh, okay. All in all, I can actually say, you did, considering the environment we've came out of in the last couple of years, did pretty good. Very good, sir. So. Okay, uh, any other questions? I thank you for being with us this, uh, this evening. I would ask Mr. Kelly, do we need to take an action to accept this audit at this time? Traditionally, Mr. Mayor, the council has just accepted the audit as, as being uh, presented by Mr. Tucker. Okay, thank you. I will entertain a motion regarding this matter. Mr. Mayor, I move we, Mr. Mayor, I move we uh, accept the audit as presented by Mr. Tucker. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right, is there any further comment or discussion? Okay, again, the motion uh, for our consideration is to accept the audit uh, of our 2013 fiscal year as presented by Mr. Tucker. Uh, hearing no further discussion, I'll ask our clerk to call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. And thank you very much for being with us this thank evening. You. Very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have two sets of minutes for our consideration this evening, Council. Uh, the uh, uh, work session meeting and regular uh, meeting minutes uh, from the February 3rd, 2014 uh, sessions. Uh, are there any corrections or additions that need to be noted uh, for these minutes? Okay, I'll entertain a motion to approve them. I also move that we go ahead and approve both sets. Okay. Second. Right. We have a motion and second to uh, approve both sets of, uh, of minutes uh, as they were presented to us. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask uh, Ms. Rosenbaum to call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. <coughs> okay, we have three public hearings for our uh, um, consideration uh, this evening. I would also note as, uh, that I failed to mention uh, that uh, during the course of the uh, public hearings, uh, those who are present tonight will be uh, welcome to come forward and address the council regarding those topics uh, as they are presented. Likewise, there will be a uh, point um, uh, towards the end of the meeting where we'll have a uh, place for items that are not on the agenda. And if there are other items that members of the public wish to uh, bring before the council at that time, uh, they will uh, be welcome to do that. Uh, our first item, our uh, first public hearing, uh, again, is on the uh, first reading. It's an ordinance of the Council of the Town of Avenue, Virginia, to repeal, amend Chapter 30, Part 2, Environment. 
Article 4, Erosion and Sediment Control, Section 30-86 through 3093, the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia. Uh, Mr. Jim Smith, are you with us uh, this evening to come talk about this? And I see Ms. Rosenbaum, excuse me, Ms. Eisenhower is also here to, uh, the two of you, to address us about these, uh, this proposed ordinance. Yes, Mr. Mayor, Honorable Council, this is the first reading of an amendment of Chapter 30, Sections 86 through 93, pursuant to requirements under the Code of Virginia. We've um, advertised as required under the Code, and basically the amendment here expands, adds to the scope and specificity of definitions found within the existing ordinance, and goes further fleshing out the administrative and enforcement procedures. It's in the proposed effort to bring the existing town ordinance, which was last amended in 2001, into state compliance pursuant to the Virginia Erosion and Sediment Control Law. Purpose of the amendment is to further conserve the land, water, air, and other natural resources of the town by establishing requirements for the control of erosion and sedimentation and establishing procedures by which same shall be administered and enforced. I am now going to defer to Mr. Jim Smith, who has all the talent and expertise that an engineer should have and explain and answer any questions anyone may have. I would ask a question of you while I still uh, have you here. Uh, before Mr. Smith gets into the, uh, you know, to the meat of the equation, when I see that we have two public hearings, you know, that are actually scheduled on the same topic, unless I'm greatly confused, and one of them appears to be a public hearing on repealing the ordinance, and is the second one going to be about enacting the ordinance? No, we have two different ordinances. Okay, all right. I this one is the erosion and sediment control. Right. The other ordinance is the stormwater. Okay, excuse me. I, I appreciate your guidance on that. I was a little confused there. Okay, thank you very thank you. much. Uh, Mr. Smith, please. I'm here to answer any questions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Man. Yeah, that's I'm about about uh, town council. The erosion and control laws, uh, or the ordinance was uh, first in, in 2001, and this is an update to the existing ordinance that we have to bring it into compliance with the uh, state requirements at, at this time. Uh, it's really, we've uh, not a whole lot new. There are some paragraphs. Uh, that have been changed and uh, it does go hand in hand with the stormwater management ordinance that will come up later and uh, it uh, it basically reflects the minimum requirements uh, uh, according to the state uh, we are not more restrictive than what the state law requires and this does follow follow the law uh, precisely we can make it more restrictive but uh, we have chosen not to do that we have followed the state laws okay and we are basically required to have this ordinance is that that is correct sir okay very good sir does anyone have any questions of mr smith or miss eisenhower while we uh, have them here okay thank you very much okay again uh, uh, we are have for our consideration uh, uh, an erosion and uh, uh, or excuse me, a stormwater uh, management ordinance uh, that is uh, going to uh, be presented for our consideration. At the uh, present time, uh, I will declare the public hearing to be opened uh, regarding this matter. If there is anyone present who wishes to address the council regarding this matter, uh, specifically this matter, they are welcome to come forward and speak to us at the present time. Again, if there is anyone who wishes to address the council at the present time regarding this matter, uh, they're welcome to come forward. I don't see anyone who wishes to address the council. I will therefore declare the uh, public hearing to be closed. And uh, council, I will. Uh, in, uh, what will be your pleasure regarding the proposed ordinance? I'll entertain a motion that we go ahead and approve it on first reading as presented. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Again, we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the erosion and sediment control uh, uh, ordinance that has been presented to us by Mr. Smith and Ms. Eisenhower. Is there any further discussion regarding this matter? Okay, I'll uh, ask Ms. Rosenbaum to call the roll, please. 
Mrs. Jerry. Aye. Mr. Howard. Aye. Mr. Humphreys. Aye. Mrs. Lowe. Aye. And Mayor Morgan. Aye. Thank you. Now that I've been enlightened, I understand that we're going to have another uh, public hearing on a different topic, which is uh, stormwater management. And we have uh, before us this evening an ordinance of the Council of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, to establish and enact a stormwater management ordinance, Chapter 30, Article 5, Sections 30 through 100 and 120, to be included in the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia. I see the usual suspects are here to address us on this matter, and uh, which uh, I'm led to believe will go hand in hand with the uh, other ordinance we've uh, just enacted on the first reading. Uh, exactly. Um, I just do the introduction, and the heavy duty lifting is for Mr. Smith. Indeed. This is a new ordinance, and this is one required of us as a newly declared MS4, and Mr. Smith will be happy to explain to you what that actually is. It's the first reading of this proposed ordinance, um, advertised right along hand in hand with the other one. The, the first ordinance was an existing ordinance that was amended. This one is a new addition. Due to differences in our demographics and population, changes in state and federal definitions and expanded environmental regulations and requirements, the town of Avenue is now considered an MS4 thereby making it required that the town adopt such an ordinance and imperative that it become effective on July 1st, 2014. The enabling section of the Code of Virginia is 62.1-44.15.27, the Virginia Stormwater Act, applicable to land disturbance activities and to ensure the general health, safety, and welfare of the citizens of the town of Abingdon. Any and all specific questions would, would likely be passed now at this time to Mr. Smith for his engineering expertise and answering. Very good. There you go. All righty. And I know the first question we want to ask is, what is an MS-4? <laughs> an MS-4 is a municipal separate storm sewer system. I don't like the word sewer in that, but uh, I would mm -hmm. prefer a storm drain. It is separate from the sanitary sewer system. This is the control of surface runoff that happens to discharge into the uh, waters of the Commonwealth. And because of the uh, 2010 census put us uh, or recognized us as being an urbanized area, the uh, uh, DEQ has declared us to be an MS4. And by doing that, it is mandatory that we uh, that we uh, have this ordinance. And again, uh, this ordinance basically follows what is mandatory in the law. It is not more, more restrictive than what the law requires, but we have adopted the minimum as, as required by the law. Now, it's my understanding that uh, there has been a little bit of back and forth uh, uh, within the state administration regarding whether or not you're going to have to have this. Some think they will, some think they won't, but all the indications are that we're going to have to have it because we've been designated as an MS-4. That is correct, sir. Okay. Yes. Very good. All right. Does anyone have any questions of either Mr. Smith or Ms. Eisenhower at the present time? Don't go far. All righty. Thank you. And uh, that being said, uh, again, we have uh, for our consideration this evening a uh, proposed ordinance uh, that would establish a uh, uh, stormwater uh, ma uh, maintenance uh, system, or excuse me, uh, it would be a stormwater management ordinance. Uh, we are required to have a public uh, hearing for this purpose. I will therefore declare the public hearing uh, regarding the stormwater uh, management ordinance to be open. And if there is anyone present this evening that wishes to address the council on this matter, they're welcome to come forward at the present time. I don't see anybody who is making a move. I'm working under the assumption that there uh, does not appear to be anyone who wishes to address the council regarding the proposed stormwater management ordinance. I will therefore declare the public hearing to be closed. Council, we have this ordinance for your consideration this evening. Uh, what, are your what is your pleasure regarding this uh, proposed ordinance? Mr. Mayor, uh, I will move that we include in the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, uh, uh, an establishment and enactment of a stormwater management ordinance, Chapter 30, Article 5, Sections 30 through 100 through 120 to be included. 
Very good. Is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second uh, uh, regarding the proposed ordinance to establish an act of stormwater management ordinance, again referring to Chapter 30, Article 5, Sections 30-100 uh, through 120 that would be included in the ordinances of the town of uh, Abingdon, Virginia. Is there any further discussion or questions about this matter or any other comment? Hearing none, I'll ask our town clerk to call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morton? Aye. Thank you. Our next item uh, is uh, going to be a public, uh, we will have a public hearing, and we have uh, for our consideration on the, uh, an ordinance of the Council of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, to repeal, amend, and reenact Appendix B, Article 13, M1, uh, Section 13-1 and 13-2 of the Limited Industrial District of the Code of Ordinances of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia. And would you care to enlighten us on this, Mr. Jackson? Uh, Mr. Jackson being our Assistant Town Manager and uh, Director of our Planning uh, Department. Sure, Mr. Mayor, Members of Council. Uh, in January of this year, uh, in meeting with some residents uh, in the neighborhood in town, uh, it was brought to our attention that some of the uses within the special, or within the uh, the limited industrial district uh, were not really conducive to what industry would be like in a town with the amount of residential zones that we have. Um, in meeting with those folks, staff, uh, both from the legal and planning departments, got together and, and began going through our ordinance to see what could be removed, what could be put into special use categories, and so on. Uh, with that, we held a public hearing last Monday, February 24th, with the Planning Commission to remove sections from the permitted uses by right. Most of those are all manufacturing and processing uses, uh, everything from woodworking to uh, chemicals, uh, perfumes, and so on, uh, and removing those, putting them into special uses. So they're still in the ordinance, but it gives the town more teeth to work with if a company wanted to come in and, and work with that kind of industry. Um, public notices would be sent out to adjacent and adjoining property owners. Public hearings would, would be held and then staff and, and the council can hold um, different restrictions under the special use permit and it would be reviewed every 18 months. So it put a little more teeth into those types of, uh, types of uses. In doing so, the Planning Commission made recommendations as well. Uh, moving uh, off, uh, professional offices and special, specialty retail stores from the special use category into the permitted use category. Um, that's perfectly okay. Those aren't uses that would, would affect residential neighborhoods uh, and would make a lot of sense to do so. But also at Mr. Kelly's uh, recommendation at Planning Commission, removing correctional facilities permanently from the ordinance. Uh, we have a regional jail. We don't really need to have that in here anymore, and, and it wouldn't be conducive as well to residential neighborhoods. Uh, in addition, we added one uh, phrase to 13-1-2 of the uh, proposed ordinance, and that was to include the words uh, storage warehouses for the storage of non-hazardous materials only. Um, that was something that was brought to our attention at the Planning Commission meeting by one of the neighborhood residents. Uh, what types of materials could be held in storehouses, warehouses, and so we included the words non-hazardous materials only. Those, uh, let me back up and state that the hazardous materials are not defined by zoning ordinance, that's defined by the Virginia Department of Environmental Quality and, and governed by the building code. So the building inspectors and the fire chief become more involved actually than planning and zoning does in that case. A little bit of history as to how we got here. Um, in 1955, uh, you have a little handout that I gave you. The second, piece, the second page <clears throat> of that piece is a map from 1955. It's actually a photo of the map that's hanging downstairs. That's our first zoning map. Um, those green areas on that map are all industries, light industries. The two purple areas are heavy industries. Um, actually, there's three purple areas. Um, the two purple areas that are the largest are Pet Milk Plant and the other one's over on Norfolk Street. I'm not really sure what that would have been at that time. Um, the green areas, you'll notice, are all along the railroad. Uh, those were mostly tobacco warehouses, um, wagon and cigar factories, and stuff like that. Um, the remainder of that map is red or orange. Orange is the central business district. Red is the business and commercial district. Other than that, it's plain and blank. That's because at that time, the town council saw the whole town as being a residential town. If you look on the, the front map, the more modern map of the town, 
you see that it hasn't changed that much. Those industrial areas are still those same industrial areas with the exception of adding the Russell Road warehouses to that. Uh, obviously we have um, the same problem happening. We have residential areas and business areas abutted to these industries. Um, today we don't have those industries like we used to. The, the one site that comes into mind um, on Lowry Drive is the um, uh, former Columbus McKinnon plant and then later Dominion Trust and now use, uses a storehouse warehouse by MXI. Um, the remainder of those are mostly storage, or uh, excuse me, um, warehouses for tobacco. Uh, when, when tobacco was king in Washington County. Uh, so, the, so the new map shows not much of a change, but with these changes in the zoning ordinance, it would prohibit a lot of manufacturing and processing uses that are not quite conducive to the way the town has progressed over the past 60 odd years. Very good, sir. Uh, so again, what we're talking about, uh, there would be uh, a change that would define uh, what types of hazardous or what types of materials could be stored. Hazardous store, uh, materials would not be uh, permitted, and those materials are defined by the Code of Virginia. Correct. And uh, likewise, uh, uh, jails and uh, prisons and so forth would not be permitted in those uh, those districts. Correct. And in turn, uh, uh, most of the uses which have previously been listed as something that you could be done by right as far as manufacturing or processing of chemicals and so forth, they in theory could be done uh, in those areas in future, but it would require a considerable process to go through to get uh, permission to do that, and it would involve public hearings and notification of the neighbors and parties involved. Correct. And that's kind of why we're here now is because the permitted uses by right as they are would allow anyone to come in and do those things, and no notification is necessary. Okay. Now, if we were to en enact such an ordinance, uh, uh, the customary process, there would be two readings required, and uh, uh, how quickly after you uh, enact the ordinance would it go into effect? 30 days, and the staff recommends a, uh, uh, forgoing the second reading and acting on it tonight. I would put it into law by April 3rd and certainly help in the current situation that we have going on. Okay. Can I just ask one question? When you, what did you say about? You said storage. You said non. You, they can't store non-hazardous materials. No, it's for the storage of non-hazardous materials only. Is the phrase well, that we added to it? Can't store hazardous materials. Right. Because <clears throat> you know hazardous materials I mean bromine and chlorine and things like that for pool supplies mm -hmm. are in that. So you know. Well, in the building code, though, it lists uh, about 30 items that are considered moderate hazardous, and that's things like we have in our house, uh, toilet bowl cleaner, aluminum foil, um, uh, what some of the other, bamboo is considered a hazardous material um, in certain <laughs> certain quantities. Um, but the uh, but this would be for the, the large storage of it in a warehouse. Uh, DEQ makes that. Yeah, DEQ okay. would control that. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is the recommendation of the planning? Is, is mm -hmm. The planning commission made the recommendation, and like I said, they added uh, those changes, those three changes. Is it time, to, was there, did you have a public hearing or anything? That, did you have any residents that spoke? We did have a public hearing. Uh, we did have a, a couple of residents uh, there. Mr. Rourke, who's in the audience tonight, spoke on behalf of the Lowry Drive residents. Um, I can't remember if there was another resident that spoke. There were about three, four people there from that, that neighborhood. What was what was the consent? What was their consensus of how did they feel about this? Did I think I took you in favor, Mr. Rourke, of this? This. I don't think they ought to be able to uh, store anything. I mean, you if it ain't governed by the EQ, I mean, if I'd go in there not knowing what to store and how to put it together, mm -hmm. uh, I'd store something that would not like, uh, blow up or something. You know, if it was mixed together. I mean, we're close to that building. And mm -hmm. Our concern always has been what are they going to be, how are they going to be regulated. Right. And uh, I have no concern about what they, uh, if they store stuff to make uh, ethanol out of it, but not to do it there. Right. Okay. Very good. All right. Any other questions, Mr. Jackson, at the present time? Okay. Don't go far. And we will be noted that uh, they, 
process the ethanol step we really know. And they are ordinance where we won't have to smell the perfume that they make uh, ethanol out of. If they uh, store it over there and it gets to smelling the neighborhood up, I'm sure there'd be an ordinance there that can make them clean that up with it. Yes, and DEQ would also get involved because it would be an environmental impact. Okay. All righty. Uh, we do need to uh, have an official public hearing as part of this. We seem to be sort of hearing each other as we go along, and that's okay, too. Uh, but we have for our consideration this evening, again, the ordinance uh, to repeal and amend uh, uh, Appendix B of the Article 13 of the M1 Limited Industrial District of our Zoning Ordinance. And at the present time, I will uh, declare the public hearing regarding this matter to be open. And if there is anyone present this evening who wishes to address council regarding this matter, they're more than welcome to come forward at the present time and do so. Again, if there's anyone who wishes to come forward, comment about this, they may do so. I don't see anyone who wishes to address the council at the present time regarding this. Uh, I will therefore declare the public hearing to be closed. Thank you. And uh, council, what is your, uh, your thoughts about this matter? Anybody? I, just, uh, I, have a, I have a question. You may ask it. I mean, I, and do, do you think this will, uh, and I guess this is kind of a leading question, but do you think this will kind of be uh, a, a, uh, a wake-up call for us to check further uh, sites, you know, as far as, as far as trying to be uh, proactive in some of the ordinances? Is just recheck. I know we do. I know we check them quite often, but sometimes they slip through the cracks. And so, right. Actually, the staff about two weeks ago started meeting weekly to review the zoning ordinance. Uh, we did that on planning commission about five years ago and stopped um, oh, about two years ago doing that. Uh, planning commission was doing it as a whole. We've since gone back to two weeks ago. Staff is going to be reviewing and making recommendations from the entire zoning ordinance and then bringing that as one whole document to the, the planning commission. And then the planning commission will leaf through it and make recommendations and then bring it on to you all as well. Uh, but that, that has, that's, that's not the reason we went back to doing it, but our comprehensive, our comprehensive plan requires us to match the zoning ordinance to the comprehensive plan. And this would be one of those steps as we're no longer such an industrial town. All righty, uh, but again, I think uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Humphrey's point is well taken, which it, and mm -hmm. again, uh, it's, it has been a reminder that things do change. We need yep. to review the entire ordinance along yes, the way, and you're, you're doing that, and I'm uh, pleased to, uh, to hear it. And again, uh, you know, the Lowry Drive situation uh, brought this uh, to our attention, but uh, that's not the only place in town where we have an M1 uh, business district. Correct. So uh, uh, as the town as a whole will be affected by this, uh, this right. ordinance. And, and Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I think that, uh, that uh, uh, Mr. Rourke did a, a, a very good job as a citizen of Avenue bringing that to our attention. Yep. Uh, not only as, as, uh, because it was in his neighborhood, but because it was detrimental to the town. So, you know, I thank you for that. You're here. And, uh, and hopefully this will provide some uh, peace and comfort uh, in several areas of the town, in, the town, in addition to your, your neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. All righty. All right, Council, again, we have this ordinance for our consideration. Uh, what is your pleasure regarding this matter? Don't be shy. I'll, I'll make a motion based on the uh, recommendation of the Planning Commission that we go ahead and approve this ordinance, uh, dispense with the additional reading of it, uh, make it effective uh, April 3rd this year. Okay. I second that. All right. We have a motion and a second to approve uh, the uh, uh, proposed amendments uh, to the ordinance uh, and to dispense with the second reading, uh, which would make the actual implementation of uh, the ordinance effective uh, 3rd of April. Is there any further discussion or comments or about this? I don't hear any, so I'll ask our town clerk to call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. Okay, thank you very much. All right, our next item, uh, and if I'm uh, getting lost or miss, uh, missing something, feel free to say so, uh, but I believe our next item is number is uh, item K, uh, resolution of the Council of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, declaring April uh, 1st through the 7th, uh, 2014, as Local Government Education Week. Mr. Kelly? 
Oh, yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, members of the public, um, this will be the second year that the council has um, hopefully adopted this resolution. If you will recall, the Virginia Local Government Managers Association um, acquired a resolution from the General Assembly two years ago, uh, two, or one year ago actually, this is the second anniversary, to declare April the 1st through April 7th Local, educa local Government Education Week in the uh, school systems. And the primary purpose of this was because there's uh, very little information in the public schools relative to local government. Most of it is devoted to state and federal government. So this is a way of en enhancing awareness. Um, our thoughts mm -hmm. at the VLGMA level was that if we could get the kids involved in local government, the parents would follow. So uh, what we're seeking to do is, again, have the council adopt the same resolution that it did uh, this time last year, uh, declaring April 1st through 7th as local government education um, week. And I would point out that uh, the reason that April is chosen, the first week of April, is that it was in the first week of April in 1908 that the current form of local government that we have, the council manager form of government, was created. And it is the most widely accepted form of local government in, in the country and many other international uh, bodies as well. And it was created in the Commonwealth of Virginia in the city of Stanton in 1908 at the suggestion of Woodrow Wilson, who would later go on to be President of the United States. So I would ask Council to adopt this resolution again, and we will forward it on to the um, local school system. Very good, sir. And uh, I think all of us on uh, this Council are certainly aware uh, and have come to the realization that of all the uh, levels of government, uh, while we may get excited about the presidential elections and the gubernatorial elections, the uh, truth of the matter is the level of government that has the greatest impact on our daily lives is local government. And it's also the level of government where the private citizen uh, can have the most uh, uh, direct impact on it, too. And uh, we try to remind people that that is the uh, reality and, uh, uh, and encourage involvement and an understanding of the process. I will take the, uh, the liberty of reading this resolution into the record. And uh, we have a resolution of the Council of the Town of Avenue, Virginia, designating April 1st through uh, 7th, 2014, as Local Government Education Week. And whereas, since the colonial period, the Commonwealth of Virginia has closely held the institutions of local government, and whereas local governments uh, throughout the Commonwealth provide valuable services to the citizens of the community they serve, and whereas citizen services such as law enforcement, public health and safety, recreational opportunities, and educating local children are most often delivered at the local level. And whereas, in recognition of the work performed by local governments, the Virginia General Assembly on February 29th, 2012, designated the first week of April as Local Government Education Week in Virginia. And whereas, April 2nd, 1908, was the creation of the council manager form of government in the city of Stanton, Virginia, thereby making the first week of April appropriate for this designation. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the council of the town of Abingdon, Virginia, that April 1st through 7th, 2014, is hereby designated as local government education week. And be it further resolved that the Council of, of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, and Washington County, Virginia School Board, will partner to promote the civic education and engagement in an effort to educate citizens about their local government, strengthen the sense of community, and engage the next generation of local government managers. Council, well, that being said, I uh, will entertain a motion regarding this proposed resolution. Mr. Mayor, I will move that we uh, uh, adopt said resolutions read okay and is there a second i'll second that okay and again we have a motion to adopt the <coughs> proposed um, uh, resolution as it was read into the record is any further discussion hearing none i'll ask our clerk to call the roll please mrs jerry aye mr howard aye mr humphreys aye mrs lowe aye mayor morton aye okay thank you very much <coughs> at this point in time we have several appointments for our consideration, uh, but I'll also uh, take this opportunity uh, before uh, we begin to uh, deal with those uh, issues 
who talk about matters uh, not on the agenda. I do know the council has uh, identified a uh, couple of things that need to be uh, considered tonight, and uh, I'll ask Mr. Kelly to uh, talk about uh, the first one, which is a renewal of our uh, employee group health uh, insurance program. Would you care to comment about that, please? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, if uh, council will recall, um, at the earlier work session tonight, our consult consultant, um, Sam Brown, uh, met with, with the council and informed the council of the need to grant authority for me to execute the extension of our health insurance with uh, Local Choice, which is our current provider for the upcoming um, fiscal year. Um, I pointed out at that time that while there was an increase of approximately 4.2% in the cost, that uh, as we work through the budget process in the next uh, oncoming uh, month or two, that we will contemplate uh, possible ways to offset the additional cost, uh, if any. Um, uh, the 4.2 increase basically translates to approximately $58,000 in addition to the current premium. I will point out to the council, as Mr. Brown pointed out, that the town has been very fortunate um, in, in uh, keeping its coverages, uh, the premiums fairly low over the course of the past two years. A couple years ago, we actually had a situation where our rates decreased. Um, and and uh, I believe at the time that we looked at uh, studying this go-round, we anticipated an increase of uh, probably close to 20% of the rate, and as it turned out, it's 4.2%. So in light of um, uh, Mr. Mr. Brown's recommendation, his report, along with the assistance of our HR director, Deborah Atkins Vance, I would recommend to the council that you authorize uh, me to go ahead and execute the extension with uh, local choice. Mr. Brown pointed out that uh, it was basically the uh, cheapest uh, uh, provider in, in our area, and uh, uh, as such, I uh, see that we really have no choice but to go ahead and continue on with local choice at this time and during the budget process we will contemplate how to make up the difference in the 4.2 percent all right council again we have a recommendation uh, uh, from our consultant mr. Stan Brown who has reviewed the options available to us regarding our employee group health insurance we have a recommendation from our town manager that we uh, extend our um, uh, participation with the state of Virgi uh, Virginia's uh, uh, is it the group Local Cho choice. The local choice program. Uh, I'll entertain a motion regarding this. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'll move. Uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, uh, let Mr. Kelly negotiate uh, this uh, for us and uh, allow him also to execute the contract with local choice. Second to motion. Okay. And again, we have uh, before our consideration or for our consideration uh, authorizing our uh, town manager to. Uh, uh, continue uh, or uh, execute the appropriate uh, uh, documents to continue our uh, participation in the local choice program. Is there any further discussion? Questions? Hearing none, Ms. Rosenbaum, if you call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphrey? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. Thank you. Uh, this, uh, it is my understanding uh, that uh, we may have a need to authorize uh, the hiring of uh, some legal consultants uh, for some possible uh, actions for our consideration or that will be coming up in the future. Ms. Eisenhower, would you care to give us a, a general overview of this? Um, depending on um, some particulars um, with some impending litigation or probable litigation, we would ask for an appropriated amount of five thousand dollars. Okay, and this would be to uh, perhaps cover the cost of expert, an expert witness and okay. some consultation. Okay, very good. Uh, any questions about this? Okay, is there a motion to, uh, to authorize uh, the uh, uh, expenditure of up to five thousand dollars for uh, the employment of expert witnesses for uh, possible legal action that may be considered in the near future? Yes. I'll make that form a motion. Okay. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? 
Okay, hearing none, I'll, and um, this would come out of uh, council contingency? Okay. Um, Ms. Rosenbaum, please. Ms. Deering. Aye. Mr. Howard. Aye. Mr. Humphreys. Aye. Mrs. Lowe. Aye. Mayor Morgan. Aye. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. Uh, and again, we're at the uh, portion of our agenda concerning matters that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone present uh, from the uh, public tonight who wishes to address the council on any matter or any particular concern? You're welcome to come forward at this time. Yes, sir. Come through. David Wallace, uh, 377 Augusta Drive, Abingdon. I didn't come here to talk, but on the way up, I noticed a beehive of activity at the three vacant gas stations at exit 17. So I'd like to say a thank you to whoever's responsible. And I was wondering if you could give the public an update as to what the status of these stations uh, is or are. All righty, uh, Mr. Kelly or Mr. Jackson, do one of you folks want to talk about that? Yes, yes, I, I can uh, uh, briefly update you in, in the sense that these these activities are actually taking place by the existing landowners, and they're being uh, um, various tanks uh, within the ground that are being removed, and the primary purpose of that is to try to make the lots more marketable so that uh, potential buyers do not have to come forward um, and deal with the environmental issues. So the landowners are taking care of those in advance. In terms of, of um, what we'll locate there, uh, there's been some preliminary negotiations between those folks that I'm not privy to, but I do know that uh, their hope is, the owners of those lots, is to uh, redevelop them for other uses and I would assume that since the tanks are being removed from the ground that it's in all likelihood not going to be another gas station. So the only one that will continue as a gas station is the one that's across from Long John Silver's? That, that's my understanding at, at the present time. The other, the other two, the old Stucky site and then the one sort of diagonally across the street, mm -hmm. um, as far as I know, they're just being removed for site prep for redevelopment. Wow, that's great. Could I say one more thing? You surely may. I'm, I'm not here as a barter board member, just as a citizen, but I would like to say thank you to the board uh, for your continued support. Uh, of the Barter Theater. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, we certainly recognize the uh, key role that Barter uh, plays in the economy of our uh, town as well as uh, its uh, immense contribution to the cultural life of the uh, community. And, uh, um, you know, we're very pleased to be able to support uh, Barter in all of its efforts. Is there anyone else that wishes to address the council this evening? Okay, uh, Council, uh, do you have items um, that you wish to uh, uh, bring forward at the present time, Mr. Humphreys? Uh, yes, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, you can hold your hearts. I have nothing tonight to bring forward to you all. <laughs> all righty. Vice Mayor Lowe, how about you? Only just to, I sent the council an update on this, but we have 25 people participating in the business challenge that the town um, helped support and uh, 17 of those people will be uh, competing for the prize money. We have several people that are just going to attend for the experience. We're very excited to have that kind of uh, participation in the first challenge. Very good. And we will look forward to uh, the winners on this. Yes, we will. Okay. Mr. Howard. I don't have anything to Okay, Ms. During. No, thank you. And you know, I don't have anything either. And uh, so this is, uh, is a rarity. Okay, that being said, we have uh, uh, several appointments. Or Mr. Kelly, do you have anything uh, that, uh, that I, I don't mean to slight you here that you want to bring to our attention? I'll make one very important announcement. And I, I was just looking over at Mr. Humphreys, and he reminded me by just uh, being the Irishman that I am, I'd like to wish everybody a happy uh, St. Patrick's Day on the 17th. Dang, I got, scoop, I got scooped on that. Dang, well, thank you. And, uh, uh, but I, I will have to take one, one issue uh, there about how you – 
uh, well, you have uh, very properly uh, noted the Irish uh, uh, who will be celebrating the holiday in the near future. Many of us have uh, Irish heritage, but well, we just missed uh, uh, March 1st, which is St. David's Day. And, uh, you know, for those of us who are of Welsh heritage, uh, we're a little bit reluctant to see uh, the Irish have all the fun. Uh, so uh, keep in mind uh, that uh, March 1st uh, of each year uh, is uh, St. David's Day, and St. David being the patron saint of the Welsh. Uh, but we will look forward to celebrating with the Irish here in the near future. Well, we kept you all on the other side of the island for a reason. <laughs> yeah, until they could bring us over and put us in the mines. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? All right. Uh, Council, we have some uh, a series of appointments uh, uh, this evening. Uh, the Economic Development Authority, uh, there's uh, an appointment there. Uh, also on the Board of Architects, will review uh, their um, is an appointment of Miss Betsy White, uh, for example, her position. She's eligible to serve a, a second term. We have uh, uh, the uh, position currently held by uh, Dr. Charles Owens, who is not eligible for reappointment. And then we have uh, three positions on the Planning Commission. And um, uh, what is your pleasure on this? Do you wish to <coughs> go into executive session, or are we prepared to handle these appointments uh, at the present time? I think we probably should go into executive session, except I will move that we reappoint Betsy Wright um, to the Board of Architectural Reser uh, Review. Okay. Uh, is there a second to that appointment? I'll second that. Okay. Uh, Ms. Rosenbaum? Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Okay. That being said, I will uh, entertain a uh, motion then that we go into uh, um, executive session pursuant to section 2.2-3711A1 uh, for the purpose of consideration of appointments uh, uh, for the Economic Development Authority, the Board of Architectural Review, and the Planning Commission. Does someone care to make that motion? I'll uh, so move. Okay, is there a second? I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and second to go into executive uh, section uh, for the purposes outlined. Uh, if our clerk would call the roll, please. Mrs. Deering? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. Okay, thank you. We've, uh, is there a need uh, for any kind of a, uh, does anybody need a break before we go in there? Or are we all prepared to go directly in I'm there? Ready, yeah. I'm ready to go in. Okay, thank you. We'll be. Did you? <laughs> Did you see Yeah, they can get some sort of food. Yeah. <laughs> 
Because I remember in the yeah, and anybody that's going to spend that kind of money, the first thing you can do is have a traffic study. And if, if, if twice a day you can't get in or out of there, I mean, that gets rid of huge assholes. Oh, yeah. Who is that now? The owners are Billy Joe Lester, McCann Boyd. So I called in and said, if you're in the train, you need to come to the house. So it's, it's, a, it's a lease then? Mm -hmm. It is. So, the Canyon Oil, that's, uh, is that, is, is the, is the daughter married to Frank Canada, the, the troop, the, the helicopter pilot? No, that's Buck. Oh, that's Buck. Canyon, uh, come on, come on. Good to see you, yeah. Oh, okay. You've been out of the only way. Yeah. How can I get the old knowledge in there? Yeah. So it, so it's if they're possibly a fourteen then that would be the well, one at Jonesboro and yes, Main Street because the other because don't the bears own one of those? No, the one, the one that uh, can't move. Well, it's one of the ones that closes. Well, they moved the date for our next meeting. It's oh, okay. One of, I don't know which. Whatever it's right at the exit for it to get on yeah. south. Oh, okay. So the other, the one that. I don't know who owns the, the one that one that said. You know, that said. Being right. That one <laughs> is, is side, usually yeah. fairly well maintained. The one that would, at the wild, <laughs> that's the one that had the sign out that said, Stop here, hamburgers. I took a picture of that one. <laughs> Instead of stop here, hamburgers. Stop here, comma, hamburgers. You have to find humor wherever you go. It's a good for Jay Warren. Could have been. Could have been. Oh, okay. We all talk about how. No, that's right. That's a thrill. Yeah, it is. Get the I've been just doing it. I've been just doing it. They were moments where I was extremely disappointed, and then other times where it was like, hey, well, we just. The bottom of the first movie was really fun. Excuse me, it's gotten better. It's always been better. It's almost as if you can get it. I like the whole thing. Yeah, it's like I thought we were going to get it. You engage so many things about it. How do you manage it? What sense does that make? Nothing. Just, you know, especially in the area that is so dependent on tourism. So, you know, actually, I think this, this, yeah, I live here by choice. And here you, you have one of the prettiest parts of the country, friendliest damn people in the world. And so they, it doesn't go together. It just makes no sense to me at all. I know years ago, trash, just domestic trash, situation was bad because a lot of places well, yeah, it wasn't picked up but oh my god there's these transfer stations all over washington county it, it's i'll go up into the natural forest you know, that, is, that is driven seven or eight miles off the road on the trash yeah you can't the way you did it yeah it makes no sense at all it didn't make sense then and it certainly doesn't now yeah it's, you hear you, you, you it's simple that can the so I'm, I'm taking a the, uh, leadership Washington County right oh, now. Oh, really? Yeah, the one of the home projects that we just, for a rural area, to host a people are here. Canada no form. idea. Yeah. That, We're eyeballing April 1st. That's a big deal to, that they take no, magazines, they take <laughs> tires, I don't know if I all sorts of sort of shit. You know, I see this. I can get that. But I don't know how you know, 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 could take advantage of it. But no, that's very progressive. It's just the stuff that... And it's, not, and it's not socioeconomic because I don't know how many nice cars I've seen on the interstate. 
Yes. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, 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 with the kids yeah, in the, 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 the hill, the you know, I live thing on thing the creek trail yeah. in my backyard, uh, voting, and, and you see it come out, and it's just unfortunately to deteriorate, and then I can't climb over the fence to get it. Well, if I walk that way, coming into town on the creek trail, at this point I just I bring a bag. Now it was bad after those bad winds came through because there was style stuff. Yeah, exactly. But in uh, the in the creeper trail is great. It, yeah, I'm amazed how clean it is. So when people up in Saltville were concerned about the, you know the type of people that it was going to attract, I'm thinking, my God, we should have them hiking along the interstate. <laughs> it is clean and uh, um, very rarely because I'm on it every day with the dog. So very rarely do you, do you see this thing. But uh, well, so it's it's not me just being obsessive compulsive noticing no the litter. Oh no, 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 no. Is, is, is there is there a loop? So like, why should you can't get on the interstate? You know, can't get on the exit ramps. Yeah, well, we we tried that. We we need to. I would ask for forgiveness. Well, that's what Rick also wanted to do. Really? And, uh, I'd love to see the town start cutting the grass. Uh, um, you know, just at the exit, you know, and on a regular, in Alex the town, sweep the right there, pick up the cigarette. Well, a couple of, um, a couple of years ago, actually probably four, maybe a little more, is when they tur they cut out all the money. Oh, yeah, I remember that. That was and previous double. Yeah. It was hideous. That was closing the dress station. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the right idea. Hold it. No. <laughs> yeah, I didn't say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, own headed stuff. But, uh, and I know because, do uh, you know Ray Redman, retired trooper? <laughs> See, he, yeah, yeah, well, Ray's a very close friend. He said, We're good friends, but if you were up there picking up stuff, I, I would put you in the car. So that's just, they're just doing their job. Yeah. And I said, why can't we do that? We tried it. Mm -hmm. we, we tried it. No. no. Not going to happen. So. I think we need to have pillars. Well, we'd be under. And, you know, if you get caught, we're just going to put you out here on the bar of green with old tomatoes. And uh, because, I don't know, I admit, do they teach it? Not teach it in school, like little kids, that, you know, you shouldn't do it. Or, I think if they don't learn it at home. Yeah. Because it was a really big deal growing sure up in Canada. And it can yeah. be... Cool. You get shot. Yeah, well, Canada shows, too. Yeah, but it's... Well, to me, it is a mindset. I don't know. And that's funny because the people that, 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 that will live around here or so, someone's, you know, they're, they're maybe a little iffy. That's one of the things they always bring up. We were in Canada, but it was just so clean. Guess what? Everybody's in by accident. Yeah. Well, I'm thrilled with uh, 17. That is just great. It really is. Because I was going to suggest to people that if, if new business go in, it, go in and thank you. And if, and if you can patronize, patronize me. Because you have my card? No, I mean, I have You got a card. Okay. Well, so I do. Uh, they're terrible. Because I came seven years Central Worlds. It's got my address and all that stuff on it. It was. Okay. Does this have your Gmail on it? Yep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll send you an invitation. We're going to put it down with the physical group. I think Wednesday or something like that. And I'll send you an invitation. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yep. You know how the, uh, we were all kids. Actually, it happens. <laughs> I'm sure I guess. Some are more it, expressive than yeah. others. And I grew up in a town like Abingdon outside of Toronto. Yeah, but we didn't, you know, we may have congregated something, but we didn't trash it. That's the thing, you know, I well, didn't have to the bush. The brass, the lids on those tanks. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and, and they would hang out. Like, okay, yes, hang out. I don't know. Put them on your truck, sit on the front. But don't. Leave a mess when you're done. Right. That's like, what frustrated me the most. You know, like you're having a good time, great your kid. That's you know, I'd rather you do that than zoom up and down in your diesel pickup truck. But when you leave, leave it cleaner than you thought. Like camping. Very, very good thought.
We'll wait with baby uh, bread and see what happens. Well, I know it's just, just glad somebody's interested. Exactly. And they're spending money on it. Yeah, that was the, uh, the biggest return. The first thing is, that's, well, see, that's why I thought something was going on. That's just a hurdle. What's he done? Yeah. 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 Be part of the plan? No. Um, yeah. Right. That's uh, complicated. No, I don't feel so sorry. For all the anything that has been going on, like I said, as soon as, well, I would love to see the Washington County State Park if you know yeah. something yeah. that's going on. Really, even an animal. Well, they're all yeah. standing yeah. in there. So you know, the community that they run 20 miles. Well, when I think about it, it's like that direct line. Mark said I'm pretty about I really like the What is it? Celebration House. Oh, that was early February. Is that the one that's right beside them? Very the rain? What's it going to be? Funeral business. That's when they rebuild the whole thing. No, they didn't rebuild it. They put some space. It's really nice. I've never been. Maybe some sort of cell. I'm not sure. But I mean, it's been done per contract. 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 But I mean, they'll it'll be. Yeah, those are my views. I like to have a kind of like that. I was waiting to be We have a good idea. It was every rumbling about the. I heard that Amory was trying to see the part of the ABC license. Yeah, having been advertised. But I like to see the ABC license. Jeff King Barber. They're all in this. No, well, I don't I think it's only been advertised. Yeah, all the time. Right, that's for about a couple of times. Yeah, that's all. 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 I'm 
Well, I thought it was very clever how they did it. That's how it worked. Uh, my wife does. Now, um, the little bit here, uh, it's a little. Yeah, you know, it's a little. Yeah, 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 it's a little. She was irrelevant. Right. Well, 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 so it's, it's, it's so well done. Or well, irrelevant. It's 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 wow. So it's it's Right, too. 
So then it's like, well, how can we at least come up with something that is you know, attractive so that we at least restrict what I mean, you can't put a dog here and you know, with the fence on it. And uh, I just assumed I don't know who was okay to, but once they opened that door, that migration was very close. No, there were, there were uh, I talked to Mike Shepard, and he said that somebody, I don't know. Five kids and boys. And they were both young. Five kids and boys. Oh, yeah. They were young. They were young. But then they started calling them. What do you think of this one? Is that the system? Restricted covenants, that's your name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm surprised because some of the things, and I've called, some of it I've called with the real issue. I just, I'll watch it over there. The fact that we I don't really like it. It. You know, with, 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 you know, with that, that just fun. book that I write, covenant, go over it with you. Fine. When Tina and I, we brought it. that responsibility to tell that it exists. Exactly. Part of me was like, oh, yeah, no. I don't know. I'm right. And Don Weiss, and as Carol Jones was on one end, they all come in front of us. And Donna Weiss uh, was representing us, and we uh, had to go. You know, sort of, we saw that we wanted, we had to get all the things done by the end of this. And I worked back in the morning, and I said, I can't get the stress from the stairwell. And I said, well, here's your stairwell. We both were Carol and Sarah. We can't hear the comments. And we were talking about it. And she said, well, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know. Well, you know, I don't know. So I had to sit there and go over the whole thing. And quite honestly, I thought it was very interesting to chat with you. But now, there's people so many violations. Well, you know, you've read the ones that apply to country clubs. And we'll see you guys. How long is it? It's about 20, 25 years older than whatever you want to do. They can't have all the things. <laughs> and tobacco drive sheds. <laughs> oh no, that, that might even be really okay. But there are some really bad ones in there. But until the court dissolves them, they're still enforceable. So they're still on the books. Or is it too late? No, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Well, sure, I'll sign it. Um, you know, I am the one appointee that I don't really have an ethical. <laughs> You're going to tell me what's ethical. I don't have an ethical exclusion. <laughs> when, when did an attorney start being ethical? <laughs> no, that's not very nice. Thank you. See you later. You <laughs> Bye. Get him out to vote. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was 649. Quite well. Worked. Yeah. These last few weeks were crazy. I was expecting to have a move for two days after and a baby. There you go. You got them? Yeah. Bye, thank you. Okay. How are you? But it's the only time I get a lot of predictable, productive time. Mm -hmm. The phone doesn't ring. And I can get messes cleaned up. Yeah. Crazy accounts. And just about the time I think, well, I'm going to see it's possible. What do you think so far? Is it cool? Yeah. It's process. It's really boring when we have a bunch of, of ordinances like we had today. And to have three at, a, three at a time, when two of them were stormwater and they run together, it's awful. But you have to do what you have to do. But it would be better if we could get more people involved as far as the time is concerned to come out and get two meetings and know what's going on. That's, 
Well, and it's online, kids. so they can watch it that way. But yeah, they'll complain no matter what. They'll find a way to complain. Yeah. You're exactly right. Oh, yeah. and you'll have to just find a way to smile. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't complain that we didn't know about this, we didn't know about this. Why didn't you tell us? Yeah. Well, why didn't you ask? It's a two way street. Yeah. I'm going to go look for Mark's budget. It's like I'm involved in the street. I'm going to make a plan. I'm going to people complain about, you know, all the time. Yeah, yeah, we we know, I know this is going on. This is going on. I read the scoop. Did you email. care? Did you even yeah, there's an email. want to know? There's an email. There's an email. There's a scoop. Now, did you read the white time? Was that the campus was sticking No, I'm busy. I mean, I'm working on yeah, no, I, was in, I was in student yeah, government in high school and college, and I loved that. Where'd you get undergrad? Went to Radford. Mm -hmm. Okay, just a very cool. Yeah, I dropped it. Where are you from originally? Brundy. Brundy. Okay. So you went home for law school. It was the only law school I was close to, close enough to be able to attend and commute. Very well. So I learned a lot of race car techniques too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. I'm just How not to get a ticket. Yeah, yeah Radford's a good school. Along with to check for yeah. part of graduate school. Do you know that uh, Apple did? My dad graduated. With some my dad graduated from Tech, and yeah. so my grandfather and great grandfather. What area? My dad graduated in food science. And with a minor in chemistry, and then my grandfather got his master's in agricultural economics from Tech. And his dad, I don't know what he got his degree in Tech. But he went on to Louisville Seminary. I still get past. That was bad. Food science was, at, was actually at the probably at the time your dad graduated from home economics department. Probably. Because I was a graduate teaching assistant in that. Oh, okay. Cool. Forget it. And back. chemistry is they go hand in hand. Yeah. You had to have. Chemistry before you can even take physics. Yeah. But he doesn't use that now. He's, he sells insurance. So. But, uh, but he knows it. But he knows it, I guess. Yeah. He always yeah. has yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. I taught home economics for a while. I taught at East Tennessee State for three years in interior design in that department. I don't want to teach. I taught special education most of the time that I was teaching. And that was the most enjoyable. Yeah, every, everybody I know, but like, except for this year. I didn't want to be a retired teacher. So I made sure I couldn't be a retired teacher by going to school three more years. And accruing quite a debt and, yes, passing the bar, which was the biggest nightmare I've ever faced. No, yeah, it was hard. It's not the sign of Well, you got through it, so I thought, you know. My, my grandfather was a, um, yeah, my on my mom's side, was a judge, or was a lawyer, then became judge, uh, resident Superior Court judge in Halifax, North Carolina, and he would tell my mom that some of the best attorneys that he saw oh, yeah, yeah. were you know, practicing and just like up in front of him were some of the people that almost didn't pass the bar. I took it you know, two or three yeah. times and almost didn't have to be said that. Yeah. And, 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 and I guess with that, that's not necessarily a good measure of how well an um, attorney yeah. will be. That's a, well, that's an awful lot of it's like, it. I think it's what gives attorneys such a bad rap. They're just... It's acting within itself. So that's that's sweet. Well, I'm not sure they have the attitude. Superior lawyers are just not as good as they used seems to come across, yeah, like right and it might not always be the case, but I didn't buy it seems to come yeah, across, yeah, and it just needs to land. disappear. Well, I, yeah. I do with my points. Oh, uh, yeah? The whole thing cost me 200 bucks. That's not bad. Because I mean, the rest of them were all I think points. that's what I like about yeah. it, the it's type of, of law that I practice. Wow. I've been prosecuting for a while, yeah, and I'm I'm just like the, I can't deny it. The law, you know, <laughs> yeah, basically, all of the papers that. That's pretty cool, yeah. I had 20. Almost twenty five hundred. That's scary. But that's crazy. probably yeah. the most no, responsible, over here. overwhelming yeah, feeling I ever had was when What's the, thing? It's the uh, uh, person that hired me said, "Well, so go in and plead this one." What? this person's freedom. And they're and expecting the me to. Smart move, because I'm, I'm a charter member of AT&T. I have that power, and that's and, uh, overwhelming. But the way some people yeah, treat that, that is abusive. That's, that's smart. That's a smart. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, that's the only way. 
How long have you been working for Abby? Almost seven years. Okay. I worked for Food, food City for four years. Cool. I was corporate counsel. And uh, it's just not why I went to law school. Law school it was leases and so what do you think I'm doing now? Leases and easements. I sort of go to court and yeah, you know, it's a lot of variety. It might be too I much variety some days. Yeah, yeah. I'm just doing chicken yeah. law. Yeah. I think I saw the day in small way off to give out you know, some what you and know, chickens? Yeah. Same thing with that. Oh <laughs> Every yeah, chicken in America can have them. I've dealt with enough caught chickens. In the real cold, I took a mother hen and her three babies to my brother's house. I put them in the basement until I could find a place for it. It's just everything. Well, it worked for a little while. All manner of chicken problems. There's certain amount of chickens that you can have that or something like that. Oh, you can have some chickens, and there's not really any limit. So far as uh, you know, there's your number on their hands. It's, it's, get, it's allowing them to wander. From the five-year-old meal in the street and get in the bird bath. Chickens in the bird bath. The bad scene. Where have you been? Inside. Hardwood, hardwood. See, I couldn't believe that. I had to see through that they charged extra if you had crab legs. Uh, I can't believe that. I wore shorts down there one time, and now they say I have crab legs. And I charge them extra. Be red. All right, council, I'm going to take a motion to be back in the break. Don't be shy. I so do. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion to second to go back in the regular session. So, uh, Ms. Rosenbaum, please. Mrs. Jerry. Aye. Mr. Howard. Aye. Mr. Howard. Aye. Ms. Lowe. Aye. Mayor Morgan. Aye. Uh, Ms. Rosenbaum, would you read the appropriate certification uh, statement, please? Um, whereas the council of the town of Abingdon is convening a closed meeting on the state pursuant to an affirmative recorded vote and in accordance with the provisions set forth in the Virginia Freedom of Information Act. Whereas 2.237.12D of the Code of Virginia 1950 is amended, requires a certification by the town council that such closed meeting was conducted in conformity with Virginia law. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Town of Abingdon, Virginia, hereby certifies that to the best of each member's knowledge, only public business matters lawfully exempted from an open meeting requirement by Virginia law were discussed in closed meeting, to which this certification resolution applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered by the Council. And if you agree, please respond with, I so certify. So one star, please. I so certify. I so certify. I so certify. I so certify. And I so do certify. <laughs> all right, I believe we've all certified. Uh, you know, we've certified. It's starting to feel that way. Yes. It's uh, been a bit of a day. Okay, we have all certified. And <clears throat> Council, we have appointments uh, for our consideration this evening. Uh, one appointment to the Economic Development Authority. We have uh, two, uh, one appointment uh, yet to be made to the Board of Architectural Review and three uh, positions to be uh, filled on the Planning Commission. No, sir. Two. two. You're correct. Uh, we, it has been determined that uh, Mr. Matt Bundy actually is eligible to serve another year. Was that about uh, an accurate yes. statement? Currently sir. chairperson. Currently chairperson. Very good, sir. Okay, and that leaves us two appointments on the Planning Commission. Uh, would someone care to uh, make a motion regarding these appointments? I will make that in the, I'll make this form of motion. We'll go ahead and uh, nominate these four people, but for economic development, Mr. Kenny Schumann, Planning Commission Maggie Costello and Langley Shazer, is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, Board of Architect Review, Andrew Neese. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second uh, uh, to point the parties uh, that were mentioned uh, to the uh, those positions. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask our clerk to call the roll, please. Mrs. Jury? Aye. Mr. Howard? Aye. Mr. Humphreys? Aye. Mrs. Lowe? Aye. Mayor Morgan? Aye. Okay, and Council, we have a number of announcements here. I'm going to do us all a favor and not go over. <laughs>
There's a whole lot coming up. I'd like to wait for a Say, hit the next guy. Rich said he wanted to hear him. I'll let you come up and read him if you like. But I will mention one that I think is on there that, uh, that is coming up that's not on there, which I believe uh, Barter Theater actually has a uh, uh, fire in the kitchen on St. Patrick's Day. Is it Barter? Well, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't the senior center have one of that? Oh, yeah, there's a lot going on. Uh, they have something. <laughs> yeah, they certainly do. Okay, anybody got anything else? It's not Barter, but Fire in the Kitchen are play. Fire in the Kitchen is playing somewhere, but I, it's not at Barter. Well, by golly, there's going to be somewhere in town. And I, think, yeah, I think you're all right. Hard work. I think thank, hard work. thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you all coming out. I will note that we had an announcement from Lord Abingdon come through, reminding us that there could be.